Now, in the written presentations, there will be more references, backup, etc., than today. Today, I'm just going to share with you specific indications in my sermon. We're also producing and will be producing short videos to help our church members worldwide know Bible truth and where we stand on issues and that we are focused on God's final commission since we are chosen for mission. Now, please carefully take note of these following confusing interruptions by the devil. And I want to tell you, I am not placing myself before you today as the ultimate answer to all of these items. I am sharing with you from my heart today because you as church leaders and God's people need to know where we stand today. Number one, a lack of understanding the Bible, how to interpret it, and antagonism against the very word of God. You see, the Seventh-day Adventist Church believes in the authenticity and authority of God's word, the Holy Bible. And it is to be applied to all people, everywhere, for all time. The church accepts only, I want to underline that, only the historical, biblical, or historical, grammatical method of interpreting scripture, allowing the Bible to interpret itself line upon line, verse upon verse, precept upon precept, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me warn you, and I've done this before, but I want you to get it into your mind. We are under attack by the historical critical method or any other method of biblical interpretation which is unacceptable to Seventh-day Adventists because those methods are not God-focused methods, but rather humanistic. You see, you become the determiner in the historical critical method of determining what is truth and what is not. But I urge you, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in understanding scripture. Use only the historicist approach when understanding biblical prophecies. Not the preterist, not the futurist, but the historical. The spirit of prophecy indicates that we should read the Bible as it reads. Spiritual gifts, page 94, indicates God has given sufficient evidence upon which to base faith if he wished to believe. In the last days, the earth will be almost destitute of true faith. Upon the merest pretense, the word of God will be considered unreliable while human reasoning will be received, though it be in opposition to plain scripture facts. Do not be influenced by those who in the church ignore, denigrate, or depreciate the word of God. The Seventh-day Adventist church membership and its leadership stand strongly on a clear understanding and acceptance of the entire word of God as it reads. All right, so get that. This is where the SDA church stands. Some Adventists love to claim Adventism's a big tent with lots of varying viewpoints and ideas. It's just some ecumenical bastion of diversity of thought. Nope, sorry, friend. That's the exact opposite of Adventism. <laughs> Adventism was founded upon 100% knowing exactly who they were, what their mission was, what the old landmarks of truth, as Ellen White called them, what those were, and that they supposedly have. This modern spin on Adventism to try and shift with the culture is exactly that, a modernist spin. Ted, I'm in agreement. 
You guys have people in your ranks that want to distort this reality and act like it isn't true. So for that, you should thank this platform because <laughs> we want your members to own what you are openly stating. But Ted, it's also funny to hear you state like you did at last year's annual council that the only method of interpretation that you guys accept is the historical grammatical method of interpretation. Sir, you just got done utilizing some other total, some hopscotch method by proof texting from all over the place, completely ignoring the historicity of the text to then derive your application from. You guys don't utilize the HGM when interpreting Revelation. You completely denude the book from history and insert all sorts of novel concepts and ideas into the text anachronistically. How you can claim you guys utilize the HGM is one of the biggest head scratchers. For those that don't know, the historical grammatical method of interpretation is when you discover the meaning of the passage as the original author would have intended and what the original hearers would have understood, and then derive today's application from that. Is that what you heard Ted define it as? <laughs> he inserts their novel idea that Ellen White and William Miller gave them of hopscotching around the Bible, and then they call that letting the Bible interpret itself, and equate that with the HGM. When no, Ted, that isn't what the HGM is. You have to utilize the original audience and derive the author's intended meaning out of the text and then deduce modern day application to utilize the HGM. You guys don't do this ever. I have yet to see it. It's always some anachronistic reading into the Bible, ideas that the great controversy worldview presents, jumping all over the Bible, and then claiming that somehow proves your position. But Avenus, there you go. The only accepted method of interpretation by the SDA church is the HGM. So you guys have to demonstrate for us that when John the Revelator was writing the Revelation, that he and the original audience would have understood, for example, Revelation 14 to be some novel end time special truth message that would begin in the 19th century, that denominations are a tool of Satan, which was supposedly told uh, in Revelation 6, like we saw a few weeks ago, responding to Ted Wilson, and so on. Let's see it. Let's see it. Ted claims that any other method of interpretation is humanistic. Ted. You guys, you utilize a method that's humanistic. It's one of the most man-centered readings of scripture I've ever heard. It centers around reading yourself and your movement into all parts of the Bible. You just demonstrated this for us not even 10 minutes prior. You read a bunch of verses that talk about being chosen and then make that exclusively about the SDA church. You didn't use, utilize the HGM when doing that. You guys do exactly what the higher critical method does. You determine what is truth and what is not, or rather Ellen White does. You literally have an entire doctrine around present truth. And then you just veil it behind, no, 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 it's Jesus speaking through Ellen White. It's him, it's him that's telling us this. But then when things don't work out according to plan, like how you're celebrating 160 years of incorporation, you just pivot and truth changes to fit with whatever you guys decide. I, I find it really hard to believe that you can be this unaware. It, it does not add up. This talk is mirroring last year's annual council speech almost to a T so far. But furthermore, Ted, you guys claim to have the great controversy theme, which is supposed to be the antidote for theological confusion and division. Yet here you are warning about such things. Why is the great controversy theme constantly failing at showing all these divisionaries the truth and getting them back on track? 
Why are there leaders in your church that aren't able to be clearly shown the mind of God, as you guys have called the great controversy theme? I thought theological division was a hallmark of Babylon. Does that mean you guys fit your own definition? Time to wake up, my friend. Smell the coffee. The alarm is sounding. And then he claims, now folks, this is going to be a theme throughout the entire talk. He claims SDAs just read the Bible as it is. Ted, if you guys read the Bible as it reads, you'd never come to the conclusion that Revelation 14 is about 1844 and the investigative judgment and Protestants needing to come join you guys, that the everlasting gospel is a novel, present truth, special end times message that only you guys have, that we need to embrace Ellen White's health reform, her writings themselves. And there's going to be a national turn international Sunday law that's the mark of the beast, that the seventh day Sabbath is the seal of God, that the fourth commandment has a halo around it in heaven, or any of the other stuff that you guys read into the text. The fact that you guys think your system is strictly derived from the Bible is laughable. And I don't mean like ha ha poking fun at you, I mean it's sad. Your own publications state that one can't even understand the Bible without the great controversy theme to interpret it for you. Your own Sabbath school quarterlies say that Ellen White's the infallible interpreter of the infallible Bible. I mean, give me a break. 